Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of January 25, 2021. And this week I got four topics I want to talk about. The first one is German company Wingcopter managed to get $22 million in funding. We'll talk about how they're going to be using that money. I want to talk about Airmap that was in the news for something not all that good. Uh, they were inting at uh, creating a landing, a takeoff and landing tax for UAS. We'll talk about what that was all about. Um, we'll talk about a drone that collides with a helicopter in uh, Chile. And then the last thing is we'll talk about the Super Bowl and how it's going to be a no drone zone and kind of giving you more information about all of that. So let's get started. First thing this week is German company Wingcopter get it, uh, managed to get $22 million in Series A investment. Uh, we mentioned Wingcopter in the past. They broke a speed record, world speed record, for a tilt rotor aircraft, and they managed to get about 100, almost, almost, really near to 150 miles an hour, which is really impressive. Now, for those of you that don't know the tilt rotor, um, maybe you're familiar with the uh, Boeing V-22 Osprey. It's this really cool aircraft. It's a man aircraft and it basically takes off like a quadcopter. It's a vertical takeoff and landing, but at, uh, when, when it gets into flight and it switches into a wing flight with the, the motors switching forward and then the drone flying forward and the, the airplane flying forward in this case. And, um, and, and it's called a tilt rotor. It's actually not called an airplane, it's a tilt rotor. And uh, Wingcopter has the same design for their uh, main aircraft. So it's really cool, it's a cool design um, and it allows them to do the vertical takeoff and then using the same motors to basically go forward. Uh, you may be familiar with VTOL aircraft, ver vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. And in this case, what you have is typically you have motors to go in the up position and then different motors switch on to do the forward flight using uh, a propeller and using uh, wings to create lift. So interesting design. Wing Capture kind of made a name for itself during the COVID crisis and they're still doing that at the moment. They're using their uh, their equipment in order to do healthcare related things. And uh, and I think they're, they're doing a great job with that. Um, they'll be using the investment money to set up an automated production line in Germany and also plan to use uh, to create a new production facility in the United States. So you can find more information in the article. I'm going to put it in the comment section or in description and uh, just a cool story. Not so cool is Airmap. And Airmap suggested last week on Friday uh, on Twitter that uh, that companies or that local government can actually collect taxes or create a tax for takeoff and landing for UAS. And I'm going to read you the tweet right here. Uh, they've actually deci decided to delete the tweet eventually. Uh, it took them several days to do that. So it was on the entire weekend. And then early of this week, they decided to remove the tweet. But the tweet said, drone technology offers economic benefits Government can create new revenue streams that support UTM services like taxation on and takeoff and landing fees. They can also design incentive programs that encourage UAS and U and AAM businesses. I'm actually not sure what AAM, Advanced Air Mobility, that's what it is, uh, to locate in their communities. So obviously this went really well, not uh, for Airmap. Uh, first off, if you're watching people from Airmap, uh, drone businesses already pay taxes in their community. Uh, that's what local government collect from me, you, other people that fly their drones and have a local business. Uh, number two, adding more taxes on drone flights would not attract businesses. Nobody wants to move to a place where there is more taxes. Um, and then lastly, local governments don't provide a UTM service. They don't provide any kind of service for uh, for many aircraft and for unmanned aircraft. Actually, I shouldn't say many aircraft. That's not true, but for unmanned aircraft, at least at the moment. So the tax wouldn't really go towards any kind of service. It'd just be a tax, okay? Uh, the message was quickly shared all over Facebook. A lot of Facebook group had it, which led to a mass delete of the app uh, with people switching to other apps like Kitty Hawk or UA Sidekick. And um, 
unfortunately, the idea of taxing local flights is not new. If you remember, if you've been following us for a while, almost exactly a year ago, uh, there was News Update 39. I had to go back and look because I remember the, the company, couldn't remember their name. Uh, actually, remember they were in Detroit and the, their name is Airspace Link. And Airspace Link was trying to create a system and quote, that's what they had said, which was highways in the sky and toll roads for commercial and recreational drones. So AirMap is trying to do the same thing. I'm not sure to what extent, I'm not sure what their end goal is. Obviously the end goal was not for having uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of people delete their app and leave a one-star review in the app store. Uh, so they eventually had to delete the tweet because I think it was creating some uh, damage. But um, I believe, we believe at Pilot Institute that the airspace access needs to remain free for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're commercial or if you're, uh, if you're flying for fun, there, there should not be a fee to access the airspace. And this is something that we've actually uh, mentioned in our response to the Remote ID NPRM, uh, where they wanted to create the USS and the USS would have created um, a paid access to get into the airspace. And, and th this cannot happen. This, this is clear that it cannot happen. Um, Man aircraft, I can fly from point A to point B in my aircraft and, uh, and not have to pay a fee to use air traffic controllers. And air traffic controller are real people that are out there that I have to talk to. And this is all something that is provided by the FAA. Um, ADSB is a free service at the moment if you are a manned aircraft. Creating a pay to fly or pay to access the airspace is a very, very dangerous thing that's going to set a precedent. And if that happens, then we're going to be looking at probably even paying to start flying airplanes. And, uh, and, 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 and this is something, by the way, that is in place in Europe, where you have to pay to use uh, air traffic control services, and it's killed general aviation. And, uh, and, and this is not a good thing. So uh, definitely a bad precedent. Uh, if you're using AirMap, think about what I just said. That's all I'm gonna say at the moment. All right, let's move on to the next thing, um, which is, again, not really that great of a news, but uh, this kind of popped up all over Facebook this week, which is a drone apparently collided with a Chilean Navy helicopter. And the pictures have been circulating all over the place. And uh, you can see a Mavic Air 2 in the picture and then a Chilean Navy helicopters. And, and the story behind it is that, um, well, there's a hole. You can see the picture right here. There's a hole in the cockpit about the size of the drone. There's there's a drone on the ground with a bloody mask, face mask, and the story is that the mechanic and the pilot were flying and the mechanic got hit in the face when uh, the drone hit the cockpit. Now, I read the comments, probably shouldn't have. <laughs> I read the comments on the Facebook post and every single time we see one of these things happen, we as a community, it feels like a lot of people just bury their heads in the sand and say, this is fake. It's not always fake, okay? It is entirely possible that this drone went through the windshield and hit the person in the face, okay? Um, some people say, well, isn't the windshield a lot thicker than, you know, why is the drone going through the windshield? And the answer is no, these, these helicopters are very lightweight and they're designed with a windshield that is not extremely solid. So um, th there's a lot at this point, why would the Chilean Navy go through the process of creating this false thing uh, just to say that somebody got hit in the face with a drone? Anyway, um, a recommendation for the community. When we see these things, we need to realize that this is entirely possible that it happens, okay? It's not a good thing for the industry, but it's something that we need to learn from. We know that not everyone follows the rules. We know that not everyone is as careful as you may be as you're watching this. It doesn't mean that it's fake. It doesn't mean that it's something that we need to disregard, okay? So um, so I just want to share these pictures, share the event. Uh, there, It has been reported apparently on other news channel in the country in Chile and uh, so it's not something that just is circulating and, and it seems like it is actually something that happened. All right, the next thing is uh, in the uh, don't be that guy category, uh, the Super Bowl is coming around the corner, February 7th, and the Super Bowl is going to be in Tampa this year. And again, this year, it's going to be a no drone zone. And uh, 
there's a 30 nautical mile radius TFR, temporary flight restriction, that's going to be put in place around the stadium. And that goes up to 18,000 feet, all right, 18,000 feet uh, on top of the airport. So no flying there. It will be in place on the 7th, which is the day of the Super Bowl, from 5.30 to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're going to be in the area, keep the drone at home. Don't fly your drone out there. Uh, in addition, you, there's a no drone zone that's going to be within one nautical mile, just one nautical mile, uh, on the same day, on the 7th, starting at 10 a.m., all the way until the TFR starts at 5.30. So essentially, if you're near the airport, near the stadium, and if you're within one nautical mile, don't fly the drone. There's another one that's going to be near the riverfront park and near the waterfront park. Uh, it's called the Julian Lane Riverfront Park and the Curtis Hickson Waterfront Park. And that's going to be two nautical miles from these areas and up to 2,000 feet. And that starts on January 29 all the way to February 6. So there's three different restrictions for drone pilots that you need to be aware of and, um, and, and keep in mind. So what's at stake? Up to $30,000 in fine and uh, potential criminal pr prosecution. So just stay away from it. Last year during the 2020 Super Bowl, uh, there were 77 drone incidents. We actually reported on that last year. Uh, four drones that were seized and then one person that was actually arrested. So I'm gonna say it again, don't be that guy. All right, don't be that guy. I don't wanna talk about it. I know it's gonna happen. Uh, we can probably open bets and figure out how many people are gonna get caught this year, but just don't do it. So um, uh, I'll put the details down in here and then make sure you check the TFRs before you fly and uh, check Kitty Hawk, check Before You Fly app and make sure that you're not in the TFR. And this is all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoy the update. As always, subscribe, like, leave a comment. Love answering uh, comments for you guys. And then um, I'll see you next week. Also, before I go, one more thing. This week, we're starting the same thing, uh, the same type of news update with airplanes. So if you guys are interested in the airplane, we have an airplane channel, which is separate from this channel, uh, where we put airplane related information. So if you guys are uh, or somewhat new to airplane, interested in airplane things and flight training uh, for airplanes, then head over to that other channel. It's called Pilot Institute Airplane. And then uh, we'll have our first episode this week uh, posting. Actually, by the time you watch this, it will be posted as well. So hope to see you there. And that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.